Hi guys, this is Flagship Girl. I just wanted to make a video because I have this on my heart to talk about to people who are messianic. What a blessing you ha you have been raised in it. If you have been raised in it, what a blessing for you because there are people out there that are Christians, don't have a rabbi, don't have a congregation, and are struggling. I have a friend of mine who said she, I think she's going to wait till next year and try again. Or she's put it off for a while and she'll try. Um, it's really hard when you are alone and you don't have the, any support. You don't have a rabbi, a congregation. And most of the people, if not all the people you know, are Christians. They're not messianic. It doesn't mean, oh, they're different, they're bad. It just means that they're still, and that they're Christians, and you're wanting to be, you're wanting to go where the Lord's leading you, but at the same time, it feels so difficult because I don't have anywhere to go. And if I, if I were to leave, okay, if I wanted to go to uh, a congregation, to a synagogue on the Sabbath, a messianic synagogue. I would have to take the bus. And you're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. So therefore, if I go on the bus, I'm making a bus driver work, even though he's already working because other people are taking the bus. So I don't do that. But that's my problem is if I were to If I were to go to a congregation somehow, uh, to a synagogue, the only way I could do that is to go on a bus. I did have one about 20 minutes away or so, but they they couldn't find anyone to take me for Passover back in 2017. And I'm not, like I said, I'm not even that far away, but if you don't have anybody, you don't have anybody. But I just wanted to, <clears throat> say how blessed you are if you were brought up in this because there are Christians out there that are trying to learn this on their own and they are struggling and they feel alone. You're blessed with your community. You're blessed with the the upbringing that you had and if you had it even if you didn't grow up in it if you had a, a rabbi who taught you and you had a congregation you could go to and learn and friends like-minded friends who could teach you and help you to learn that's such a blessing but see there are people like me who don't have that who are primarily alone they don't have a congregation a community emails are nice but it's not the same and I'm really sad because I really want to know more. And my friend, I was talking to him about Passover and saying all the stuff you're not supposed to eat. And I ended up eating stuff I wasn't supposed to eat. And he's like, just concentrate on Jesus. Just focus on Jesus and love him and don't worry about it. And he's telling me that this is, these are like uh, ceremonial things or whatever. And I'm just like. I feel it's just, it's not easy to be saved or be a Christian because, uh, because you, you want to have a relationship with the Lord, right? But then when you become messianic, there's things that are, you're trying to be, learn about it. There's so many things required of you and, and I don't understand and I can go online and there'll be 50 different answers for one thing. So, should I have chocolate on Passover, for example, or should I have milk? There might be, there might be like three different websites. One says yes, one says no. I'm just giving you an example. I don't know if that's true, but I mean, there's different, <clears throat> there's different websites that say different things. And I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry I keep saying it, but I don't, I just don't. I 
I feel so lost. I just, I feel so lost, guys, because uh, there's things that I want to do. There's, I want to be a part of a, a messianic congregation, but at the same time, how can I? Uh, I don't know that stuff. And uh, it's really sad because I could be a part of one, but I, I don't, I have one close by. So maybe you could pray for us that are between being Christian and being Messianic. Some people say that you're living by the law. The law doesn't exist anymore. No matter what I say, they just don't seem to understand. And I understand that because I was in that place when my friend told me about Christmas being a pagan day. I was so mad. I was like, that's my, I love Christmas. Nobody's gonna take my Christmas away. And a friend of mine told me that the beginning of Passover was on a pagan day. I didn't look at it. I didn't look into it, but I could have. Anyway, I just wanted to say that it's really hard. And you could say, well, if you let the Lord lead you, it's not hard. But seriously, I don't have a rabbi. I don't have a f uh, friends to help me. I'm all alone. And sure, there's a Bible study uh, where I live. But it's a Christian-based Bible study. They do it on Sunday. They have Easter. I just don't want to do that. Sometimes I, I think I could just give up and go back to just being a Christian the way I used to be. Because there's lots of churches around here that have services on Sunday. But I don't want to do Sunday. Sunday isn't the day that God called out as the Sabbath. Anyway... I don't know. I don't know. I just, there's people out there that need support and need praying, need prayer buddies to pray for them that they can continue because it seems very difficult. I was telling my friend, I said, you know, Passover seems very difficult and I don't think it's supposed to be like that, but it felt very difficult for me. And I really didn't have Passover, honestly, because I ate so much of the foods I'm not supposed to eat. One day somebody said, hey, you want to have a donut? And I was like, oh, yeah. Then after I ate it, I told somebody, I'm trying to stay away from bread this week. And she's like, well, you just ate some or something like that. You just ate some bread or a donut's bread or whatever she said. And I thought, oh, boy, I didn't even think of that. I just ate it. It takes a lot of self it takes a lot of, um, not self-will, um, it takes a lot of, uh, uh, control. Uh, it's like self-control, but, like, through the Lord, not just, I don't know. Anyway. And the other thing is that people that are messianic say things around people who are still Christians or are trans, or who are, kind of in between Christian and Messianic that kind of can push people away or confuse people. When I was at a synagogue back a few months ago, Messianic synagogue, <clears throat> there was someone who said, yeah, I don't like the name Jesus or something like that. And I just thought, I can understand why she would say that in a way. I don't really understand the reasoning, but I but I can understand that she wouldn't. But at the same time, I was sitting two chairs away from her and she was across, like catty corner from me, across from me. Yeah, there are a lot of churches around me that are Sunday churches, but I don't wanna do that. I feel like the Lord's coming is so near. I don't know why all of a sudden I just felt like I wanna, I wanna do what he wants me to do. It's just, it feels so hard because if you don't have 
other messianic brothers and sisters around you either calling you or visiting you or you visit them or something email is nice but it's just not very personal so so i kept myself thinking okay so okay so should i take the bus then even though <clears throat> it's causing the bus driver to work now some people say you're being legalistic but but the Sabbath is a serious thing for people that are messianic. Um, so I, I've caught myself wondering, well, should I be taking the bus to go? At least I could go. But I don't normally go anywhere. I just stay home the whole day on the Sabbath. So I guess I've talked a long time. It's, it's almost 11 minutes. I just, I'm struggling because I want to be, I want to do what the Lord wants. I want to be where he wants, but I just feel really, I find it really difficult. I was talking to my friend who, I, I think she, she's in a Christian church of some kind. I won't say, but I was telling her how difficult I find it, like with Passover and all these different festivals and which ones do you keep and which ones don't you keep. For example, some people don't celebrate Hanukkah, some people do. And and she was saying that she realized how difficult it was. Like, even if you do keep it, what do you do on those days? And what, what, what reliable source do you have? And somebody could say, well, this is a reliable source. This is from my rabbi. This is from my rabbi. This is from mine. Check out mine. But what if they're not preaching sound doctrine? Then you're going under someone's teaching that is preaching something that's not sound. So she was telling me that she put it away for a while. And I can understand that because there's times that I, but yet somehow I feel like it's pulling at me. You know, like, like you have a rope around your waist and it's just kind of like pulling at me, come this way, come this way. <laughs> and, and don't fool yourselves by thinking that I'm like this devout servant of God. I want to be more every day. I just, I could be so much more than I am. But it's not me. It's not about me. It's about the Lord. I had this dream that I was flying. And when I have flying dreams, normally I have to flap my arms like this. I have to flap, 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 flap. And I have to flap them about maybe four or five, six times to get off the ground. Three to six times, I'll say. And then I start going up and I keep flapping. And then I, but in this dream, I won't tell you the actual context of, I was looking for someone in my dream that, that is in my family, but I was flying, but it started out for a different reason. But I flew to this person's house. And I think I was babysitting them or something. Anyway, so I was flying to, to find someone I know in my family. And I was flapping my arms, flap, 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 flap. And I would fly, so it'd be like this. It'd be, and I'd start going up in the air. So anyway, I, I, I read something that said that if you're flying, if you're flapping your arms, it's in your own strength anyway. But I was flying for so long, and then, and I can remember looking over this particular state I felt like I was looking over it. I don't know if it was an accurate depiction, but anyway, I remember coming down to the ground, landing onto the ground because I saw something that looked like a tornado, but it was just, or a water spout, but it was just a really big fountain. <laughs> but at one point, I started flying without my arms. I was, I believe I was sitting on the palm of God's hand and he was flying me over this particular state. I couldn't see his hand, but I saw it in a third person. And I was just sitting in the air. And I was just going... I was just like this. Just fl you know, just going over in the sky. But it, when I was flying on my own, I wasn't flying very high. And I don't think I was when God had me on his hand. But somehow I felt like it was God was flying me. And I felt like I was flying in my own strength. And that was the first dream I ever had where... Where God threw me, 
or I flew in God's hand. I didn't see God's hand, it's just me, but somehow I felt like I was in God's, the palm of his hand. And he was, he just had me in his hand, like, he just had me in his hand, like this, just over the state that I was going over, trying to find someone in my family. And I, in my mind, that dream meant to not lean on myself, not to depend on my own strength, but to depend on God's. That's what I was thinking that it meant. Anyway, I have all kinds of uh, vivid dreams, but this isn't about dreams. It's about the messianic stuff I was talking about, but I just find it difficult to do this alone. That's why God had everyone in a community in Israel because they, they couldn't be alone. He wanted them to be together as a community. What a blessing to be together as a community. Anyway, this is now 16 minutes. It's over 16 minutes. It's 16.08. So I'm going to go ahead and go, but just pray for your brothers and sisters out there who are trying to learn the Messianic way and they're struggling. They're coming from Christianity or whatever it might be. Maybe Buddhism. I don't know. But they're they're trying to obey God and it's difficult it's a difficult road I think well thank you so much for watching I hope you have a nice day sorry this video was so long I just I don't know and pray for my stomach please my my digestive system thank you if you would please I appreciate it thank you God bless you bye guys Take care. By the way, if you look at my face and wonder why it looks like that, I've, I've had a really severe form of gum disease that removed, you're going to laugh or think I'm ridiculous when you say this, but it ate up my cheeks. I, there, there are no cheeks here. This is just what's left over from the top of my skull below my eyes. And it's eaten up most of my jaw. I can show you pictures the way I used to look. But I'm still here, so... I just wanted you to know why my face has changed so drastically from 2014 till 2019. I mean, people get older, but... Anyway, I just want to let you know, because I... Because I, um... Uh, it's really sad, but I still love the Lord, and He's still with me, no matter what goes on. It's my fault. I should have taken better care of myself. So, take lots of vitamin C for your teeth. If you're having gum problems, gum disease, take tons of vitamin C and take a probiotic to help. Uh, well, I know vitamin C will help. You could also try a probiotic. <clears throat> this person had really, really bad problems with their mouth and they were taking lots of vitamin C and it helped. Okay, well, bye guys. Take care. God be with you. Shalom.